kids? Hey! Welcome to Kid Life. Welcome to Kid Life! Vern, what, what do you have here? Well, I thought we would make the welcome more exciting. Um, that's a launcher. Uh-huh. See? You know, you're gonna yeah. put me on the launcher you, and... and you? Yeah. Or I'm gonna put myself on the launcher okay. and Sam the Shark's actually gonna stomp on it and launch me through the air and I'm gonna fly through that hoop of fire! It's not on fire, it's just strings and stuff. We're pretending. Oh, yeah, the hoop of fire! The hoop of fire! Okay. okay. It's very dangerous, but I am courageous! Okay, so put that so, on the floor. Okay. Sam, are you ready? I'm ready! I'll come over. I'll right. stomp on it. Okay, let me and go on get on this. Okay. Yep, you got it ready? I'm gonna go get on the launcher now. Gotta so get myself ready. You sure this is safe? Um, it's exciting. No, it's not what I, okay. Um, and now, Sam? I'm ready. You launch me into the hoop of fire. Uh, okay, here we go. One, two, three. While I help out Vern here, uh, welcome to Kid Life. I'll be all right. I'm okay. I just need a band-aid. You're resilient. And maybe you are. Let's pray. Hello, my friends. Let's pray. Let's talk to God. Lord, we just thank you so much for your love, your great love that's more than we can even imagine. I pray you would help us receive your love and help us to give that love to other people that they can come to know you. Bless our time. We want to know you more, God. Open up our ears, our eyes, our hearts, and let us have a lot of fun because you're so fun. We love you. Thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name, amen. It's me, Shelly, and we're going through this series called Upside Down. We're learning some of the teachings in the Bible that go completely against the normal way of thinking. In other words, it seems to be totally upside down. Hey, Shelly. Hey, Steve. How was your week? Terrible. Just terrible. Oh, no. I'm never going back to school ever again. Tell us what happened. Maybe we can help. Nobody can help, and that's why I quit. That's not a very good attitude to have. Tell me what happened. What made you so angry? <sighs> it was recess, and I was out on the playground about to go on the slide. Slides are fun. Yeah, well, I tripped and fell to the ground. Oh, no! When I looked up, all the bullies in my class were looking down on me and pointing and laughing. I made a promise I would never go back to school again. That way, I never have to face those mean bullies again. Steve. Never again. Look, I'm sorry you were made fun of, but you can't just quit school. But I'm so mad at the bullies. I'm so mad. I, I, I don't like them. Oh, don't say that. Why not? They're mean to me, so I don't like them. Steve, we must love everyone. Everyone except bullies. No, everyone. The Bible says we should love our enemies and pray for them. But how? I was so embarrassed. Anyone can love someone that loves them back. That's easy. But we must love our enemies and pray for them. Pray for something bad to happen to them? No, Steve, not at all. We're supposed to pray for them to find Jesus. Oh. You see, we were all sinners, and yet Jesus loved us. And in the same way, Jesus loves those bullies just as much as he loves you. And Jesus wants them to find salvation and love just like you found when you became a Christian. You're right, Shelly. I'm sorry I was so angry and mean. I want them to know that Jesus loves them too. That's the spirit. Kids, today in your lesson, you're gonna be learning about a man named Saul who was a bully. In fact, he didn't like Christians at all. But after an amazing encounter with Jesus, his whole world was turned upside down. Well, enjoy your lesson, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. You know I got to tell you what you got to know. Tell you what you got to know. You know I got to tell you what you got to know. Tell you what you got to know. Hey, kids. 
to tell you like what you gotta know. Today, we are like talking about loving our enemies. So, every time today somebody asks you what you gotta know, you tell them. I will love and pray for my enemies. Pray for my enemies? I don't think so. That is like so not happening. Whoa, girl. Like, who even is your enemy? My enemy is a girl at school. Susie. Susie always makes fun of my outfits, even though I always look so totally fabulous. Like, why would I pray for her when she is so mean? Because, girl, Jesus said we have to, like, love our enemies. It may not be easy, but it's, like, so important. After all, God loved us when we, like, totally didn't deserve it. Fine. I will pray for Susie. I will pray that she learns how to be nicer to people and like that she starts to love God. <laughs> Yay! That's like so totally tubular. So every time today somebody asks you what you gotta know, you tell them. I will love and pray for my enemies. And that is what you gotta know. This is Callie from the Valley saying <laughs> TTYL. Ready to play? Simon says extreme. <sighs> you know the rules. You have to do whatever Simon says to stay in the game. If you don't do what Simon says, or you do something Simon doesn't say, then you're out and must sit down. Even if what Simon says doesn't match what you see on the screen, you always do what Simon says when Simon says, Simon says. Simon says, stand up. Simon says, walk in place. Simon says, run in place. Simon says, march in place. Simon says, run. Simon says, march. Simon says, salute. And three, two, one, stop. Whoops, Simon didn't say stop. So if you stopped, you're out. Take a seat. Simon says stop. Simon says touch your head. Simon says touch your toes. Simon says touch your shoulders. Simon says touch your knee with your elbow. Simon says touch your ear with your elbow. Simon says keep trying. Okay, you can stop now. Oh, if you stopped trying, you're out. Simon says clap. Simon says stomp. Simon says clap. Simon says stomp. Simon says clap. Simon says stomp. Simon says stomp. Simon says, if you clapped, then you're out. Let's continue. Simon says, sit down. Simon says, close your eyes tight. Simon says, cover your eyes with your hands. Simon says, no peeking. Oh, wow, what is that on the screen? I have never seen anything like this before. That's crazy. <laughs> you guys should see this. Oh, too bad you got your eyes shut. Oh, man. <laughs> this is hilarious. I didn't even know that was possible. <laughs> Amazing. Simon says you can not open your eyes. Seriously, though, this is the craziest thing I've ever seen. Simon says you can open your eyes. Simon didn't say you could take your hands off your eyes. So unless you still have your eyes covered, you are out. Okay, Simon says everybody is back in the game for our final speed round. Simon says this will be an opposite round. So do what Simon doesn't say and don't do what Simon says. Stand up. Walk in place. Clap. Stomp. Clap. Stomp. Spin around. Freeze. Spin.
spin around. Dance. Dance and spin. Freeze. Dance. Dance and spin. Freeze. Spin. Dance and spin. Simon says freeze. Simon said freeze. And this is the opposite round. So unless you kept spinning and dancing, you're out. Simon says congrats to those of you who made it through to the end. Great job. And thanks for playing.
hot, I like chili and salt, oh, chili and salt. Oh, hey boys and girls, it's me, Teriyaki. And I was just getting ready to cook up a special power verse for you to learn. As you know, I sometimes scramble the words to the power verse. So I may need your help getting it unscrambled. Let's take a look at it. But pray say, love your Matthew. I for those who persecute you. Enemies 544. Um, yes, this is not right. This is wrong. Very mixed up. Kinda like the time I made lobster bisque with an ultimate frisbee disc. Really not sure how I got that one wrong. Anyway, I'm gonna need your help getting this power verse unscrambled. Let's look at it again. Hmm. But pray say. Well, this is wrong. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Which word should we remove? Ah, yes, pray. But blank say, love your Matthew. Okay, wrong again. Love your Matthew? What is Matthew, your pet lizard? No, this doesn't make any sense. Let's remove the word Matthew. But blank say, love your blank. I for those who persecute you. Oh no, wrong again. This is so mixed up. Which word doesn't belong now? I? Okay, let's move it. Blank for those who persecute you. Okay, which of these words we have set aside would make sense in the blank? Of course, pray. Pray for those who persecute you. Enemies 544. Nope, wrong yet again. But I think we know what to do here. We have a word set aside that is also a book of the Bible. Do you know what it is? Yes, Matthew. Matthew 544. Okay, from the top. But blank say, all right, we have two words left. I and enemies. Do we think this blank should be, but enemies say? Or, but I say? I agree, but I say. But I say, love your blank. Well, we know what goes here. But I say, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. Matthew 544. Aha, that's it. I think we have it. Let's try saying it all together now on the count of three. Stand up with me and say it loud. One, a two, a three. But I say, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. Matthew 544. Great job. Now, I've got to get back to making this nougat. Or was it a new cat? Oh, surely not. That wouldn't taste meowy good. Anyway, the customers are waiting. Until next time, this is Teriyaki saying, ladle top. Hello, boys and girls. My name is Pastor Tammy, and today's Bible story can be found in the book of Acts chapter 9. It's about a young man named Saul. Saul was a very, very mean man. Saul was the enemy to a whole lot of Christians. He traveled from city to city, arresting Christians and throwing them in prison. He even had some Christians put to death. He was full of anger and hatred for God's people. One day, Saul was traveling down the road towards a city named Damascus, when suddenly a bright light shone in front of him. It startled him so much, it knocked him to the ground. And a voice began to speak to him from inside of that bright light. It said, Saul, I am Jesus. I am the one you are persecuting. And then he said, get up and go to Damascus and I will tell you what to do when you get there. So Saul got up, but then he realized that he was blind. He couldn't see a thing. God told Saul to go to Jerusalem and wait there. Meanwhile, God spoke to a man named Ananias who was a strong Christian. God told Ananias to go find Paul and lay hands on him so he can be healed. And as you can imagine, 
Ananias, he was a little worried because he heard about Saul. After all, Saul was the enemy to all Christians. He was mean to them. He beat them. He put them in prison. He even put them to death. So even though all this was true, Ananias had to practice, practice the truth that Jesus taught. Jesus taught to love your enemies. Ananias, he went to Saul, he was obedient. He laid hands on Saul and then Saul was healed. He was able to see. And eventually Saul changed his name to Paul. He was the apostle Paul now. So he stopped sinning, he stopped persecuting Christians and instead he began to preach and teach the word of God all around the world. He was a mighty teacher. So imagine if Ananias had chosen not to obey God. What if Ananias said, God, this guy doesn't deserve your love. He doesn't deserve your forgiveness. He doesn't deserve to be healed after everything he's done. Don't you know what happened, God? He doesn't deserve any of that. Saul may have never been the greatest preacher on earth. He may have never been healed. He may have never gotten saved or he may have never been the preacher, the best preacher the world has ever known. So today we're going to learn that when we love our enemies and pray for them, God can do some incredible things. I tell you, it doesn't matter how bad they are or how much hurt they've caused. We must all follow the teaching of Jesus and love our enemies. If we will do that, amazing things will happen. Amen. If you have an enemy, love and pray for them. What do you think of when you see a heart? A heart like this. Right. Most of you would probably say that when I see heart, I think of love. But who do you love? Do you love your parents? Do you love your sister, your brother? Do you love your best friend? Do you love your teacher? Do you love your cousins? Because sometimes cousins, they are like siblings, you know? Do you love those people? So it's easy to love these people because they love us too. That's the easy kind of love. Are there any boys or girls that are mean to you at school? Yes. When I was in school, there were people who were mean to me. And has anyone ever said something about you that was not true? I've been lied on before. It doesn't feel good at all. Do you love those boys and girls, although they're treating you like they do? I know I wouldn't, but should we really be expected to love people who are mean to us, who treat us badly and say ugly things about us? Really? <laughs> well, according to Jesus, the answer is yes, is absolutely yes, according to Jesus. So we find this command in a teaching that Jesus gave that is often called the Sermon on the Mount. In this sermon, Jesus said something that really surprised his listeners. And I bet the people listening thought this teaching was kind of upside down. I mean, like, who does that? From the way people normally think, that's not, that can't be right, Jesus. But Jesus said, you have heard that you should love your neighbors and hate your enemies. But I say, love your enemies. The world will tell you, love people who love you back, right? But no, nope, Jesus is saying, love your enemies. And if someone does mean and hurtful things to you, you have to pray for them. That's what Jesus is saying. Now, most of us have no problem loving those who love us back. In fact, my first point is anyone can love those who love them back. Let me say that again. Anyone can love those who love them back. It doesn't take much to love someone who gives you gifts, who treats you wonderfully and shows love back to you. The Bible says even sinners do that. Even people who don't know God, they do that. You love me, I love you back, but that doesn't make anyone special, right? Sinners love their parents, they love their friends and those who do good things to them. So loving those who love you back, but it's the least you can do. 
Anyone can do that. Loving people like that, yes, it's a great thing. We're supposed to love everybody, but it doesn't make you special because sinners do that. But Jesus says to love your enemies and pray for those who do you badly. Oh, Jesus. Oh my goodness. Only Jesus would say that. But he said, anyone can do that. So Jesus commands us to do more than that. He asks us to love our enemies and pray for those who hurt us. And why should we love our enemies? Jesus said that when we love our enemies, we are acting like children of God. Mm. You're acting like children of God when you love your enemies. In fact, we're acting like Jesus when we love our enemies. That's what it means. We're acting like Jesus. We're imitating Jesus. We are followers of Christ. So whatever Christ does, we are supposed to do the same thing. Even though it's not easy, we have to do it because it's a command from God. So here's something you need to remember. And this is point number two. Even while we are sinners, Jesus loved us. Let me say that again. Even while we were sinners, Jesus loved us. And it is so true. It's true. Even when we are disobeying God or living for ourselves and behaving just like an enemy of God, Jesus loved us. He knew that we would sin and break his commandments, but he died on the cross for us. Anyway, we were doing those things before we started, we, before we gave our life to him, he died for us anyway. He loved us. He demonstrated that love by giving his life so that we could be saved from our sins. So if Jesus can love us when we are behaving like the enemies of God, how much more should we love others who need to see God's love in a real and powerful way? Think about that. How can you love your enemies? And one of the best ways is, my point number three, show love to your enemies and pray for them. Let me say that again. Show love to your enemies and pray for them. Praying for others is one of the best ways to show your love for them. Pray for their hearts to be changed. Pray for their lives to be blessed. Pray that they will give their Best, give their lives to Jesus. They would totally just forget about themselves and say, Lord, I want to live for you. So when you pray for your enemies, it is impossible to hate them. You can't hate somebody that you pray for. And there's an old saying that if you talk about people to other people, you'll grow to hate them. But if you talk about people to God, then you'll grow to love them. So pray for your enemies and show love to them every chance you get, because you never know, you might end up being just like Ananias in our Bible story today. Ananias was willing to show love and pray for Saul who changed his name to Paul. But little did Ananias know that Saul would end up becoming one of the greatest preachers the world has ever seen. So I have a question. Are there any people in your life who's hurt you? If you have a piece of paper, can you write the names of people who treated you badly? Or maybe if you don't have a piece of paper or a marker, or you could just think about them in your head. Think about some people who's hurt you. They might have not have hurt you recently, but maybe in the past, or maybe somebody is hurting you right now. And as we continue to live, somebody's going to hurt you because human beings, we're not perfect. We do stuff. Sometimes when people are hurting, they tend to hurt other people. So right now, write on a piece of paper, somebody you can think of that hurt you. It could be a classmate. It could be a family member. It could be your teacher. Or just think, imagine, just think about somebody. Okay, you got that? I'm going to think about somebody too. Okay, so just like Ananias prayed for Saul, who changed his name to Paul. You just never know what God has planned for them. We have to love our enemies, pray for our enemies. So you can have that person's name in front of you as you go in and out of your room, you go through your house, you can just look at their name and say, Lord, please help me, help me, help me. That is so important to show them God's love. So throughout the week, Think of that person and spend time praying for them every moment you get. 
Do you got that? So either write their name down on a paper or just think about somebody who's hurt you. Don't keep that pain in your heart because that can cause other issues. That's why we have to give our enemies to the Lord. Because if we talk about our enemies with somebody else, we'll hate them even more. But if we talk about our enemies, Lord, um, such and such and such did this to me. But when we tell God about it, he'll give us that supernatural ability to pray for them and love them at the same time. You got it? Okay, let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, for this lesson. Father, help us, God. Help us, help us, God. We know that someone wrote down a name or they just have somebody in their head who's done something wrong to them, who hurt them badly. God, I ask that as they pray that you will change the heart of that girl, that boy, maybe those grown-ups, maybe it's the parents, maybe it's the siblings, God, but you are the one who can turn the heart. You say people's hearts are in your hand and you can turn it wherever you want to soften their heart, God. Maybe their heart is hard. Maybe they too have been bullied or mistreated and that's the only response they know they're always in attack mode or they just bring in pain to other people, but you can even soften the heart, God. Soften the heart like only you can. I pray, Father, that as they pray, their heart will be softened and you will use them to bring light to the world. We are the light of the world. We are the salt of the earth, God. We are living in darkness, but it doesn't matter how dark things get. You will use us, your people, to bring light to people's lives, oh God. We just give you all glory, all honor and praise for these lessons, for these Bible stories to tell us what to do during difficult times, different difficult circumstances, whatever it is, oh God, you are love and you will help us love the unlovable. Like the Bible story said, it doesn't make us, we're not special if we only love those who love us back. Worldly people do that. That doesn't, that doesn't make us special, but we're supposed to love those in spite of who they are, in spite of how nasty they are, in spite of how much they talk about us, in spite of how, you know, no matter what they've done. So Father, we bless you for giving us a way to get through this life, even in the midst of being persecuted by people. And it's in your precious son, Jesus name, we all say amen and amen. God created everything in the universe, including you. You see, God loves you so much and wants to have a friendship with you. But there's a problem. We've all sinned. That means we've all done something wrong, every single one of us. And that sin separates us from God. There's good news. You and I don't have to be separated anymore. Because of God's great love for us, He sent His only Son, Jesus, to die on the cross and come back to life for us so that we can be made right with Him. All we have to do is choose to make Jesus the leader of our life. How? It's as easy as A, B, C. A. Admit. Admit what you've done wrong and tell God you don't want to sin anymore. B. Believe. Believe that God sent Jesus to take the punishment for your sin. Trust that you are forgiven and that you are now right with God. C. Confess. Confess to others that Jesus is the leader of your life and your best friend. Choose to make Jesus the leader of your life. Get to know Him and how much He loves you and make the choice to love Him back. Well, all right, Vern, you're all patched up now. Yes, sir. Put this I, away. I love my uh, Crayola Band-Aid. Yeah, just um, make sure you don't take that off, okay? It's a battle scar. Yeah. Now, I'm ready to do it again. Re no, we just patched it. No, on, no, I never give up. I'm resilient. I bounce back. Okay. I keep going. Um, This time, I know I'm going to make it. All right, you ready? Okay. Ready, Sam? I'm ready. Just, just make it through this time, okay? Here I go. up again, but see you next time. Bye! Love you guys! And I need another worm. 
Hi, boys and girls, Pastor Anna here. Hey, we want to ask you something. Would you like us to pray for you? If you have a prayer request, something you want us to agree with you to ask God for, email us at kids at lifesourcechurches.com. Send us your prayer request and we will pray for you. We love you guys and we want to pray for you. So have a great week. Warm.